J.K. Jr. Our grandparents grew up with the yellow peril. Our parents grew up with yellow discomfort. Our generation grew up with yellow invisibility. I genuinely believe that representation is the key to cultural acceptance. If your heroes on the screen and the world look like you, that can change everything. So if what I'm doing is able to shift the needle even an inch towards mainstream cultural acceptance of Asians in film and TV, then there could be a whole new group of kids out there who mightn't have the baggage that I had growing up. All the wasted energy I spent trying to fit in and act white. For me, the real measure of success, the proof that Asians have been fully accepted in Western society, will be when they start naming natural disasters after us. Hurricane Schwang, Cyclone Kama. That's when we'll know we've really made it. And it goes the other way, too. Let's get a Tsunami Joe in there once in a while, you know? Uh, Typhoon Brett, uh, Monsoon Tina, or what have you. Angela Moo. When did I first want to be an actor? I was seven, yeah. Mom had Anita Moy's Rouge on videotape. It was a favorite movie of Anita's. We wore that tape out. I wanted to dress like Anita in those gorgeous Chang Sams, be like her, act like her. For sure, that's when I knew I'd be an actor. I guess I was naive in many ways about the industry. It can be brutal. Everyone is so focused on looks. Don't get me wrong, that's important, but all the girls like me who had to make their way up to a nine from a six or seven in high school... You grow into yourself, start figuring out your own look, start acing your makeup game. Well, when you reach nine, you think you've made it, but girl, that's when you realize, oh shit, there are different levels of nine. I'm like a three nine. That means in real life, I'm a nine, but in showbiz, I'm a three. I'm the friend. I'm never the girl, you know? A three nine. Ringo Chow. Hey, hey, what are you doing on the set? No, no, no. Strictly no media allowed on set. If you want the toilet, you must use the one at reception. This toilet is for cast and crew only. What's the matter? Busting to go? About to piss yourself? Okay, fine. Go. Quickly. But don't tell Baby Bao. He'll kill me. From the blue corner, with a four-fight win streak, standing at 180 centimeters tall, training out of the very first TFR gym in Wan Chai, representing China, put your hands together for Ericsson, Big Dick Chia! From the red corner, standing at 184 centimeters tall, training with celebrity sculptor and representing Hong Kong. Presenting to you, JK, the Yellow Peril Junior. There goes the bell and oh! J.K. Jr. is absolutely rocked from the get-go with a vicious flying knee from Big Dick Ricky and following through with a stunning combination of head strikes. With his God, his hands are down. He's not protecting his head. Couple of big air swings from J.K., the Yellow Peril Jr., and a good left hook counter from Ricky C. He's going for the takedown and gets it. J.K. Jr. is in real trouble here. Erickson Chiang is a noted ground and pounder. He's getting J.K. Jr. locked up in the half-guard position. Oh, and there he goes, raining down some brutal shots. J.K. Jr. is flailing on the ground, absolutely flailing. I have never seen a takedown defense quite so strange as this. Have you ever seen anything like this, Richie? Is it perhaps some new technique? I see no merit to it, no. I don't want to come right out and say it. Everyone's regimen and plan of attack is different, but it's almost like he's been trained wrong. I'm hearing J.K. Jr.'s coach, Yolo Jean, screaming something from the corner. He's saying, do the crocodile, do the crocodile. Is that the crocodile? I hope not. This is an absolute rout. Big Dick just grounding, pounding, asking questions, and J.K. Jr. with no answers whatsoever. <laughs> 